Welcome to Ye Old E Ink Curiosity Shop. We'll just call it the shop for short going forward. But this is a new uh, YouTube series that I'm putting together where every week I'll release a new episode and we'll cover curiosities, just anything um, around the theme of E Ink that caught my eye for the previous week. Sometimes it's going to be news on a particular device, maybe an update, maybe an announcement of a new device, maybe it'll be a demonstration of what you can do with e-ink um, that maybe you haven't considered before. Maybe it'll be going over things I find on the internet, you know, posts on Reddit or YouTube, uh, what have you. Anything that uh, is kind of fun and is worth sharing, I'm hoping to bring to the shop. So I hope you enjoy it. And uh, today's episode we have in three segments. The first segment is I'll just give some announcements about a couple recent updates to a few ink devices that you might find interesting. The second segment is we'll start uh, with a little demo with how to create PDFs that you can load in as templates on the Supernote. And then finally, we'll close out with looking at what I think is an interesting and probably um, relatable Reddit post about an individual who's looking to buy an e-reader. And we'll talk about it and share some thoughts. So that's today's episode, and I hope you enjoy it. Okay, the first thing on the agenda for this episode is to talk about a couple updates that have just recently been released by BigMe and Supernote, respectively. We'll start with the BigMe one, and I have the uh, release notes here on the screen. What's interesting is BigMe has done a pretty good job over the last month or two taking their UI um, and their system and converting everything to uh, a proper English. And so it used to be that a number of the labels didn't quite make sense or there might have even still been some latent Chinese uh, in, in some of the text on the device. And I think they've pretty much cleaned that up. However, one area where uh, they haven't cleaned that up is around system updates and those come across in Chinese. Um, but thanks to the magic of Google Translate, we have uh, that translated into English here. I like how they also translated the, uh, this icon for the Kobo app as well. Um, this is for the Inknote Color Plus. I checked to see if there was an update for the Galley, and there isn't yet, so hopefully there's one coming for that. Um, just to highlight some of the changes that they're uh, talking about here, they, they are talking first and foremost about optimizing power. Um, I find this kind of interesting. I actually uh, like the power consumption of the Eatnote Color Plus. I could get about two to three weeks on standby and light usage just fine, um, So, which I thought was pretty good. So if it gets a little bit better, that's great. Um, they talk a little bit about updating the color enhancement algorithm I so that color displays more vivid. I haven't noticed that yet. Um, they talk about fixing a problem with the charging light. I actually didn't have a problem with the charging light, so that was a non-issue non for me. And then it goes on. You can read the other updates there. I think overall it's, um, you know, it's, it's a minor adjustment, and I'm happy that they're continuing to update the device, but I don't think that there's a major headliner here. That's not as true with the Supernote that also released an update. And there are the release notes there, plus you can see the, the, the um, version number of the software. Um, there's three things I'll highlight here. You can certainly read down the list. Um, obviously, what they think is the marquee change is the ability to go into a web browser and to move files via your web browser. So this would be as opposed to backing up your files either on their servers or on um, you know Dropbox or... Um, whatever type of system that you have to back up your file. So you could just do a direct backup onto your computer using this feature. And I think clearly they think this is the feature that most people are wanting. I'm actually more excited about the second feature, which is the ability to make templates out of PDFs. Previously on the Supernote, you had to have PNG files, uh, and those are a pain to put together in the right dimensions and, and to load onto the device. So I'm very excited they're moving to PDFs. Um, this is not new for some of the competitors. You know, Books and BigMe both allow PDFs already uh, as templates, but I'm just excited 
and happy to see that Supernote is finally following suit. And we'll actually do a demonstration of that um, in our next segment. The other thing I'll kind of highlight, and I have very mixed feelings about this, um, it's the last bullet under the added section, which is talking about adding a laser pointer to the device. And this is basically where you take the stylus and you hold it just above the screen, not touching the screen, but just above it. And as you're casting onto whatever device you're casting to, um, a circle will appear, and that's what they call a laser pointer. Uh, I'm not super impressed with it, but we'll actually see that in action um, as we do our demonstration on loading PDF files. So you'll see for yourself and, and figure out whether it was a good update or not. But in totality, um, some nice updates by Supernote that has a reputation uh, for taking their devices, which are now a couple of years old, but keeping them relevant by putting really nice um, changes to their software. So that trend continues here. Okay, for our next segment of today's episode, we're going to do a demonstration. And as we alluded to in the previous segment, we're going to move a PDF file onto the Supernote and show how that works as a template. Um, but we're also going to show how you can create your own template. Now there's plenty of templates on the internet. Um, you can find them, download them, uh, a lot of them are free, and they're fantastic, but maybe there's something specific that you want and you can't quite find it and you just want to design your own. So I'm just going to show real quickly how you can do that, and it's really simple. So the first thing is I'm in Microsoft Word, that's what you're seeing on the screen. And a couple things I'll point out. The first thing is I've set the margins to be zero on every side. And this allows whatever I do with the template to go all the way to the edges, top, bottom, left, and right. Um, and in fact, that's what we're seeing here on the screen. So what you see right here is an image, and I just clicked on it, so you can see I've selected this image, and I just pasted it right on top of the Word document. I did a little bit more editing to the image. The original image had much more, uh, much darker lines. So I muted those so that when it's used as a template, you can see the writing strokes on top of the template um, easier than if had it been darker. Um, but that's about it. And I'll just, you know, again, kind of show you as I'll move this off to the side. This is just an image right on top of the Word document. Um, and I put this together you know, probably in about 10 minutes. I really didn't put a ton of work into this. Um, you can put more effort, obviously, into a, a template to make it just the way you want it, or, or not. But once you have it set up, and I'm pretty much ready to go, I just need to save this as a PDF. So I'll go to File, Save a Copy, and Hexagon, we'll call it Hexagon Sample 2, and make sure I put it in the right spot. All right. And templates. And this is on my computer. You would save the file anywhere you want. Oops, I saved it as a Word document. Let me save it as a PDF. That's, that's the key. So we'll save that. Beautiful. Okay, so the next step now is we're going to move that onto the SuperNote. So if I pull up File Explorer and I go to Templates, where I save that file, here it is, Hexagon Sample 2, I can scroll down. I have the SuperNote currently connected to my computer via USB cable. So I'm going to go ahead and expand this, expand it again, and there's this folder called My Style. So all I have to do is take this sample and drag it over to my style. So the next thing I'm going to do, and I'll do this quickly off camera, is I'm going to connect my SuperNote to the screen so that we can uh, see the screen and uh, I'll show you how we'll apply the template. Okay, we'll be right back. All right, so now I've connected my SuperNote uh, to a browser so I can now display the uh, SuperNote page and that's what you're looking at here and I'm calling this test. So I'm going to go ahead and click on, here I'll use the, um, there we go, that's the laser pointer. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this guy right here, on that, and then I'm going to click on background layer there, 
And I'm going to go over to customization right there. And there's our hex 2 here, which is a little light. Hopefully it came through. I'll go ahead and select it all. Yeah, there it is. And then I'll come up here and apply it as template. And there it is. So I'll go ahead and uh, write on it. So I'll put like a little stick figure guy here. Go here. So it's a pretty light one. I think if I were to do this over again, I would go ahead and darken it a little bit. Um, it shows a lot better on the screen. It's much lighter when you're looking at the, um, at the actual device. But regardless, you just saw a demonstration of how easy that was to both create a PDF and then to load it onto the device. Really simple. And you can imagine all the different templates that you might make and it's really just a matter of your effort or finding the right template away. So a fantastic change by Supernote. And that is the new PDF templates and laser pointer in action. You know, I have to say the laser pointer turned out to be a lot more effective than I thought it would be. So I'll take back my earlier comments. Good ad, Supernote. Okay, for our final segment of this episode, um, we're going to look at a Reddit post and kind of go through it. I thought it was an interesting post, both uh, in terms of the question being posed, which I think a lot of people can relate to, but also uh, how I'd answer it and how other people have answered it as well. So let's take a quick look. This is extracted um, from Reddit, from the e-reader um, group, and this was done by someone uh, named Change Changing One, and the subject is overwhelmed by the choice of e-readers. Hi. I'm thinking of investing in an e-reader. The thing is, there are so many out there and I'm overwhelmed by the choices. I'd love to hear what are some of your personal suggestions. Now before I go on, I want to just point out the good news here. First off, I definitely understand how someone could be overwhelmed by all the options because there's a lot of stuff out there. But in my opinion, as it relates to e-readers, you've got a wide range of, um, you've got a wide berth meaning that uh, there are so many good e-readers out there, as long as you have a sense of the features that you want, um, you may not necessarily get the, the best e-reader for you, but most of them are really good that are out there. And so um, high probability that you'll end up with something that, that you want, especially if you know what you want going in. And I think this person does have a pretty good sense of what they're trying to do. So I think they'll end up find regardless of what device they end up with. But let's go over the criteria. So the first thing this individual uh, is looking for is to read library books and specifically was looking for the Libby app. Okay, so that's pretty good. Uh, the next bullet, this is an interesting one, read and buy manga comics. The reason why I find this interesting is the comics in particular. Manga is traditionally in black and white Comics are traditionally in color, so I'm curious about this poster. Are they looking to read color comics, or are they okay with black and white? And that's a critical distinction, because if you're moving into the realm of color, it's possible, but your choices narrow down significantly. So unfortunately, we don't know what the poster was focusing on, but that's something to keep in mind. They go on to ask for something that's lightweight, which is pretty straightforward. A long battery life, sure. Um, and then the final bullet, something that will last for years. And actually, again, um, much like uh, in the first, first comment, most e-readers actually hold up really well. Um, and in fact, I think that I would imagine that most people tend to upgrade because they like the features or something specific about a new device coming up not as much that their old device doesn't work anymore. Um, I, I think actually, you know, this, I feel really good about this person's uh, chances in getting uh, an e e ink book that they will enjoy for a long time. All right, well, let's, well, before I go into the comments, let me give my first reaction. And as I mentioned, there's some ambiguity on some of these bullets, although I do think this person is clear in their mind about what they want. I'm just not 100% clear in a couple of these, like like how lightweight does it need to be, um, and then the color issue as an example. 
but let's work with what we've got. Um, my initial reaction, obviously if you're looking for Libby, you need a device that has that. Android-based devices have that, so Books or Big Me, uh, Mobiscribe, I believe, is also Android-based. I'm probably forgetting a couple others. There's some options there. Um, but, you know, my, my go-to e-reader right now, at least the one I recommend, is the uh, Onyx Books Nova Air C. And I think based on this person's description, that might be a good fit. So I'm going to go with that. Let's see if any of the posters agreed or if they went in a different direction. So the first comment that we have is from someone named Strider. And this person uh, noted that Kobo has access to Libby, which I didn't know. So that's that was interesting. Um, and I guess any Kobo e-reader has access to Libby. And uh, not only did this person comment, but 11 people kind of gave it a thumbs up. Uh, so a lot of popularity for Kobo. Okay, so that's that's one option. Um, this person, Obi Lan, love that title by the way, um, recommending the Pocketbook Era or Inkpad Four. That's an interesting recommendation. Um, I did own a Pocketbook Color a couple of years ago, and I have to say the hardware of that device uh, I thought was fantastic. It was incredible its weight distribution, um, the back of that particular device had a nice a tacky feel that, that felt good as well. Um, my problem with the pocketbook ultimately, and as much as I love the device, and it had good buttons on it too, which I appreciated, but the problem was the store, it was really bad. And so you really needed to sideload books if you were going to use that device. And of course you can sideload on e-readers, that's a common thing. But for me, you know, the convenience of just purchasing a book and having it download automatically onto your device, I, I don't put up with side loading and I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, but of course that's something you could do. So that would be my only cautionary point, but I certainly love the pocketbook device, so it's a good recommendation. Here Frogman's pointing out that um, this was referring to what the poster had said in parentheses uh, about discontinuing overdrive, and I guess Libby is synonymous with overdrive. So, um, good. I didn't know that, so good tip, Frogman. And if we go to Vibrant Violet Grace, again, another shout out for Kobo. Uh, specifically, this person focused on the Libra 2 or, um, and, and kind of downplayed the Clara 2E uh, for the larger screen for manga. Okay, interesting. Okay, and then this was a, a this was an interesting post, and I don't know how to pronounce the, uh, the name, so I'll pass on that, but you can see it on the screen. But a couple interesting things. First off, this individual is uh, recommending the Kindle Scribe. The, what I find interesting is the Kindle Scribe is a 10-inch device. Um, I don't know the weight, but I tend to think of 10-inch devices as being most comfortable being held with two hands. So when the person put in his original, I'm saying his, I don't, I'm just saying that generically, um, original post um, as lightweight, I kind of assumed that, that that meant they wanted to hold the device with one hand, um, and which would imply an eight inch or less um, screen. That doesn't necessarily mean that. Some people can hold a 10 inch, but I tend to find 10 inch devices, those wear on you pretty quickly. Um, and then the distribution of weight is kind of hard to hold with one hand over a long period of time. But in interesting that they throw that, threw that out there. And actually, if the poster is willing to consider, you know, holding the device with two hands, then, then there's a, a much broader range of weight that that person would find acceptable. Um, and I might even actually, well, hold on a second. So if, if I keep going further, he, he recommends, uh, again, in the 10-inch sphere, uh, the book Note Air Plus or Tab Ultra, um, and then it goes on to say Big Me is an option, but he's heard, and again, I'm using the word he very generically, I don't know what the gender is of any of the posters, but just as a placeholder. Big Me is an option, but I heard mixed things about them. Actually, I own the Big Me, as, as we noted earlier in this. I have two devices, 
And um, if you're going to consider a 10 inch device, then I would strongly consider looking at the Big Me Inknote Color Lite. Similar to the Inknote Color Plus I own, uh, a little bit less RAM, and it does have less storage capacity, but it has a slot to put in a memory card. So that might be an option if the 10 inch space is available and if color is important, because then you get Kaleido 3. Uh, Tab Ultra is a great choice, but uh, same situation, you know, you would need to hold it with two hands. Same screen that the Big Me Lite would have, $100 more, but you get a graphics processor, which makes it a little bit smoother. So it is a little bit of a nicer experience, um, but both are good options. Interesting. And then we have the final poster down here that basically talks about uh, manga and how a lot of e-readers really aren't well suited to, um, to displaying that, which, which I didn't know. I don't read manga, so that was an interesting insight for me. I can tell you with comics, the reason why comics work on an 8-inch screen is because a lot of apps have the ability to go cell by cell. And I don't know if there's an equivalent for that on manga or not. That would make that much more of a, um, a plausible experience if, if that was present. Um, you're still uh, in trouble, right? Essentially, if you have an 8-inch screen or less, and, and the cell is the entire page. So then it's, it becomes a very cramped experience. And pinching a zoom isn't always the best experience on e-ink devices, uh, even if, if it's available at all. So a really good point by this particular poster. Um, and that might be another reason why the 10-inch screen makes more sense. But again, that depends on whether you know, you're willing to hold the device in, in two hands or not, because I really don't think one-handed holding of a 10-inch screen is going to be that comfortable over a, if you're sitting down to read it for a long period of time. So great comments. A lot, lot of uh, love for Kobo, uh, Kindle, and, and there was a little bit of books in there as well. And they're all great options. So really depends on what specifically the poster once, but, um, but I think that, that, as usual, Reddit comes through with a lot of great advice, and I feel pretty comfortable that whatever this individual chooses as their final device, they're going to get something that they really like. All right, so with that, we conclude today's episode. Um, let me know in the comments if there's any particular areas that you're interested in uh, that you may want to be seen covered in the future. I don't, no promises, but if it matches my interests, then I'll definitely be willing to add that to a future episode. And uh, please subscribe. Uh, I do hope to release these roughly every week or so. Um, so we'll keep that content coming and uh, would appreciate your support. Thank you very much, and I hope you're having a wonderful day.